Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today uh, we're going to discuss further into slant asymptote lines and now look at example three, which looks at a vertical hyperbola as opposed to the horizontal hyperbola, which I covered in my earlier video, so make sure to check that out. Link is in the description below. So let's go over this example. It states, show that the lines y equals a divided by b times x and y equals uh, minus a, time, uh, a divided by b times x are slant asymptote lines of the vertical hyperbola y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals one. And here I want to add another note. Uh, basically notice uh, the difference between a horizontal hyperbola, which I covered in my last video, is just that the x and y uh, variables over here are switched, so x and y, as the horizontal one had x squared. Uh, divided by a squared minus uh, y squared over b squared equals one. And so those are, those are switched and the resulting a and b uh, constants over here are switched in the asymptote equations. And in the horizontal one, it's b over a as opposed to a over b. So in other words, let's just write that down. Yeah, so I'll just write this down so for a horizontal hyperbola. Horizontal hyperbola, we have uh, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals one. And the asymptote lines, asymptote, uh, or the slant asymptote lines, slant asymptote lines, uh, this one's r y equals to plus or minus b over a x. And then this one that I'll prove soon for the vertical hyperbola that it's, uh, I'm gonna cover in this video, vertical hyperbola. We have y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals one. And then the slant asymptote line are gonna be y equals uh, plus or minus a over b uh, x like that. And again, uh, basically this was from my previous video, which I proved this, so make sure to watch that previous video. And then that's on example two. And this one is, well, this video, which I'll cover right now. Yeah, so all right, let's go over that solution, put a line here. So recall that the slant asymptote line mx plus b, just an equation of a line of the slope and the uh, y-intercept of the function f of x is defined as follows. So the slant asymptote line is defined like this, where the limit as x approaches infinity yeah, of the difference between these two, in other words, f of x minus this line, mx plus b, is equal to zero. So as x is approaching infinity, the, the values are getting closer and closer. So when you're subtracting, you're basically subtracting the same value and you're getting to zero. In other words, it's asymptotically approaching that line, but never actually. So yeah, that is the definition of a slant asymptote. So make sure to uh, watch my earlier videos on that. So now let's look at the vertical uh, hyperbola and prove that this these slant asymptote lines are in fact slant asymptote lines, or those equations are slant asymptote lines. So thus what we have is y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared. And now this proof is gonna be very, very similar to my earlier one on horizontal hyperbolas, but I just thought I'd do it just for completeness. Yeah, so we have this one here. Now let's just move everything in, in terms of uh, x. So we get a, a function y in terms of x. So move this over to that side. What we end up getting is a y squared over a squared is equal to one plus x squared over b squared. Uh, actually here I quickly move that x squared uh, over b squared on the left side of this just so it's very similar to my earlier video on the uh, horizontal hyperbola. So just for, and but the other one had a minus, this one's just a plus. So let's just move this uh, a squared over to this side by multiplying both sides by a squared and then what we end up getting is a y squared equals to, yeah, equals to an a squared over b squared x squared plus a squared. So we multiply everything to cancel that denominator. And now just like in my earlier video, I'm gonna try to factor out this a squared over b squared by multiplying b squared over here over b squared, so not modifying anything. So then we could take these out and this becomes, actually I'll write it down over here, this becomes a squared over b squared and then we factor out these two out, so we're just left with a b squared. So we have a x squared plus b squared, like this, over here. 
and this is our y squared over there. So now what we'll do is just square root both sides and then what we get over here is when we do that we square root this one so this just becomes y but because because there's a square in there the y could be plus or minus and when you square it becomes positive so again we put the plus or minus on this side and so y could be plus or minus and also now this a squared over b squared the squares just cancel so we have a over b and then we have well the square root of this uh, addition x squared plus b squared yeah, so we have this one here, and this is just basically, our, we'll call this our f of x, and it's a two-part function. We could have the plus or the minus, like this, and I'll just circle this. Yeah, so thus what we can do now is, well, just uh, apply this uh, definition of the slight asymptote. So that's our f of x, we're going to subtract it by mx plus b, which is, well, these two equations plus or minus a over b times x. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save time and do this all in one go, as I'll show you, uh, that will just still work out fine. So thus what we have is, is the limit. And we're also going to take the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity, just just because it uh, fits all well into this uh, equation. And to show that that slant asymptote works on both the left side and the right side, or positive or negative infinity, and I'll just do this all in one go. So we have right here, this is going to be f of x, which is this one. I'm going to add, the, again, the plus or minus inside. a over b, square root, x squared plus b squared. And then I'm going to subtract now by the line that we're trying to prove, which is, again, over here, uh, plus or minus a over b, x, like that. So we get, uh, yeah, subtract the plus or minus a over b times x, like that. That's our mx plus b line. And then we want to find out if it uh, approaches zero. So now notice what we have. We have a plus or minus a over b, and then we have plus or minus a over b. And those are just constants. So we just factor that out of the limit, just basic limit laws, because it's not going to change the limit. So we're going to take it out of there. So we have a plus or minus uh, a over b limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity, like that. And then we have, finally, over here, put another bracket square root x squared plus uh, b squared yeah, plus b squared and then we have a subtract by x because we took uh, those all out yeah so we have this I'm just put a regular bracket like that and again as shown in my earlier video we could just multiply by the conjugate I believe that's what it's called where it's the uh, instead of the subtracted by x we do a plus so we can cancel out some square uh, square roots there as well as some other Term. So what I'll do is multiply this by x squared plus b squared plus x, like that, just put this over it, and then divide it by the same exact thing. So we're not changing this equation, but we're just making it so we can cancel some terms on the top. So then we have a term like a, a similar to the top one, but at the bottom, so that we can try to get a 1 over infinity type term to see if it actually goes to 0, just to see it. And again, we're not changing anything, we're just manipulating how it looks. So we're going to multiply this inside. So this becomes, write this out, plus or minus a over b limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. doesn't matter where it goes, and I'll show you it doesn't matter. Uh, and we're going to get 0 eventually anyways for uh, plus or minus. And again, plus or minus a, b. Just grouping these all in one go just to save time. And uh, let's just see this. So this one times by this, the squares, the square roots cancel. So we get a x squared plus b squared. And then this one times this, we get again plus x square root x squared plus b squared. And then we can do this one over here. So then we have a negative x times square root x squared. And again, there's that's why you multiply by these conjugates, so we can get a bunch of cancellations going on. Like this, and then these ones can cancel, and then negative x times x over there is just going to be minus x squared. So, we could put a division over here, but notice what we have, and I'll just put this one down first. So we have this part here, it's just going to be square root x squared plus b squared plus x. So all we do is get a bunch of cancellations at the top, and just so then, uh, and all we have to uh, do is basically get this term at the bottom to get these cancellations at the top. So we, we could uh, cancel out the x squareds, 
So the x squared is cancel, x squared minus x squared. And then this part right here cancels with this right here. So x times the square root of square root term, and then minus x times that square root term. Those all cancel. All we're left with is this is b squared on top. So this equals to plus or minus a over b limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. And then we have a b squared over a x squared plus b squared, or then square root dot plus x. Yeah, so now that we have this, what I'm going to do now is, as shown before, to evaluate these kind of limits, we're going to multiply or divide both sides, the top and bottom, by the highest power. In this case, it's x, because here there's an x squared, but then you eventually square it, or square root that, so you get just an x. So what we're going to do is 1 over x on top, and 1 over x at bottom, so that what we end up getting is, again, a plus or minus a over b limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity, then we get a b squared over x. And then over here, this is going to be a 1 over x, and then square root x squared plus b squared. And then over here, plus x over x, like that. And now what we can do, this one just cancels, becomes 1, and this one will just leave it like that. But notice here we can, again, as shown before, we can get this inside the square root by, by uh, just uh, squaring this and then square rooting it so that we can just put the square roots or the same power of uh, power of one half altogether. So what we end up getting is a equals two over here a over b limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity and then again just leave that over there b squared over x over yeah over uh, here in this one, this x squared is going to be well dividing it on both of these terms. So we get an x squared over x squared. That just becomes, well, 1, and then plus a b squared over x squared, like that. And then plus over here is just 1. So this is an x squared, like that, and this is just plus 1. So what happens now is, as you plug in this plus or minus infinity, what we get on the top is, well, we get b squared over, well, plus or minus infinity. In other words, this is dividing it by plus or minus infinity, a constant. You're basically dividing by a really, really large number. In other words, it's approaching 0 on top. And then at the bottom, what we end up getting over here is a, well, a square root 1. And then this part here is a, uh, we're getting a 1 plus infinity term, which that approaches 0. And then plus 1 over here. That's just 1. So in other words, we get over here is a, is a uh, this is approaching 0 on the top. And then at the bottom, so this is approaching 0, this part right here is approaching a square root 1 plus 0 plus 1. In other words, this is approaching, again, that's a 0. This is going to be a square root 1 plus, square root 1 is just 1. This 0 doesn't do anything. So we just get a 2. Oh, yeah. In other words, we get a, a 0 over 2, which is just 0. So this whole thing is approaching 0. It doesn't matter if it's plus or minus. Plus or minus is constant times this, it just not, it's not going to change anything. It's just going to be a constant. Yeah, so this entire thing, the limit, is approaching 0. Like that, and there is our proof. Yeah, so thus what we have is thus y equals to plus or minus a over b, as shown again from over here. This is our mx plus b. Those are slant asymptote lines to this equation. Uh, they have the plus or minus side of it. So we get plus or minus like that times x are slant asymptote, I spelled a bit better, slant asymptote lines like that. And now, just as before, let's just graph a simple example with a equals 2 and b equals to 1, as shown here. So again, this is plus or minus a is on the top. So this is going to be our a is 2, and then b is 1 over there, x like that. And then here's the negative side of it. And now we have this part here. This is our just our vertical hyperbola, y squared over a squared. So this is just going to be our y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals to 1, like that. And again, we have a similar cross or x shape as shown before. So we get it like that. And there is the hyperbola going upwards. Like that. And this one's going downwards, like that. Cool stuff. There, and there's that x across, and as you can see, it's asymptotally approaching these um, these asymptote lines. So it's approaching on this side, this side, negative side, positive side, doesn't matter. All approaching these lines. It's going to be different based on whichever line you're looking at. 
or whichever way you're going. So, and also I want to do another po uh, point. Notice how the asymptote lines uh, lines are nonetheless have similar yeah, similar shapes to those for the horizontal hyperbola example in my earlier video. So also with uh, if we have a equals two and b equals one, and this is because the asymptote lines are just lines passing through the origin. So yeah, even though there's different, all all are different by just flipping the a and b, and but there's still lines going across this origin there. And uh, here again from my earlier video, notice this one is this is where we have uh, b is equal to one. So in other words, this was a b over a like this. So a is two again, b is one. So we have a 1 over 2 as opposed to 2 over 1. This is going to be our x like that. And this is again our horizontal um, horizontal hyperbola where we had x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared. As opposed to y squared over a squared uh, minus x squared over b squared. So we have this part and then again there is the horizontal side going like this on the left and right. So that's what I like to call them. So anyways that's some pretty cool stuff indeed. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you uh, followed along. It's a very interesting video on uh, basically deriving the asymptote lines for uh, vertical uh, hyperbolas and uh, make sure to watch my earlier video on, on horizontal hyperbolas. But again, it's very, very similar derivations and examples. Just, just the terms are going to be a bit different. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. And uh, like always, get down all these exact notes in the link below as well as viewing my notes all on Steemit. Links will also be in the link in the description below and also make sure to check out my uh, private discord chat room and uh, comment with like minded people and uh, like always make sure to check out my amazing math stuff forums on uh, sign on, on reddit and vote and post any cool math or science related stuff you find anyways that's all for today thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math e